Hello everybody and welcome to History Bite number 351, dated August 21, 2022. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. Thank you so much for tuning in today. This History Bite is entitled, The Lend-Lease Act of 1941. Before I begin, however, I'd like to formally invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Juarez Lee Shelton, M.A. And in addition to that, please also click on that little notification bell immediately to the right of the subscribe button. In doing so, you will receive notifications when I post new, exciting, and enlightening videos in history, law, political science, theology, and philosophy. Thank you so much in advance. You are the best. So again, this video is entitled, The Lend-Lease Act of 1941. The Lend-Lease Act of 1941 was a U.S. federal law which allowed the United States of America to supply war material, food, and oil to other allied nations during World War II. In effect, from March 11, 1941 to September 20, 1945, the purpose of Lend-Lease was to give necessary assistance to countries whose defense was deemed vital to American security itself. Much of this aid came in the form of tanks, airplanes, warships, and munitions. Much of the aid came without cost to the recipient countries, but some items, such as ships, would be returned once the war was over. Naturally, most items were not returned, having been destroyed during the war, and material that uh, was retained, uh, the United States often imposed charges for. From 1941 to 45, some $51 billion worth of supplies were shipped to other Allied nations. Adjusted for inflation, that is the equivalent of some $690 billion in modern dollars, accounting for approximately 17% of all U.S. war expenditures. A breakdown of the percentage going to respective countries is as follows. Great Britain received $31.4 billion in lease supplies, uh, to itself and its massive worldwide empire. $11.3 billion would go to the Soviet Union. $3.2 billion would go to France. $1.6 billion to the Republic of China. And $2.6 billion would go to all the other remaining allies of the USA and their uh, war efforts and their uh, abilities and necessities, rather, uh, to wage war. All right? Similarly, in what was known uh, as reverse Lend-Lease, the U.S. would be granted access to uh, British bases and territories, uh, as well as to have their aircraft uh, refueled and serviced at Soviet bases. Additional forms of reverse Lend-Lease were also provided, which we'll get to later on uh, in this lecture. The Lend-Lease program has its roots in the cash and carry program initiated by the Neutrality Act of 1939. The act allowed belligerent countries to purchase military goods from the United States, payable in cash, and transport them in their own ships back to their home ports. At this point, the United States was rapidly mobilizing for war, having instituted a peacetime draft and a rapid expansion of its navy. In December of 1940, Prime Minister Winston Churchill sent a 15-page letter to President Roosevelt pleading for further assistance and asking not to be forced to sell off British assets to pay for it. By 1941, Great Britain had exhausted a large amount of available revenues in paying for American munitions and did not wish to be driven into bankruptcy. In December 1940, President Roosevelt had proclaimed that America had to be the arsenal of democracy and proposed that the U.S. be able to sell munitions to Britain and Canada. By February of 1941, it was evident that most Americans, some 54% in total, were in favor of supporting Britain and, you know, the British were, in a word, desperate for more American assistance. President Roosevelt eventually came up with the idea of Lend-Lease, summarizing it this way. If there was no practical alternative, there was certainly no moral one either. Britain and the Commonwealth were carrying the battle for all civilization, and the overwhelming majority of Americans led... Uh, in the late election by their president, wished to help them. As the president himself put it, there can be no reasoning with incendiary bombs. Roosevelt summed it up like this. Suppose my neighbor's house catches on fire. If he can take my garden hose and connect it up with his fire hydrant, well, his hydrant, rather, excuse me, I may help him to put out his fire. Now, what do I do? 
I don't say to him before that operation, neighbor, my garden hose cost me $15. If you've got to pay me $15, you have got to pay me $15 for it. I don't want $15. I want my garden hose back. In other words, if you lend certain munitions and the munitions come back at the end of the war, you're all right. So when the Lilies program was introduced into Congress, most Democrats gave strong support to the idea, whereas most opposition came from isolationist Republicans. Ultimately, the bill passed along party lines in both houses, 260 to 165 in the House of Representatives and 59 to 30 in the U.S. Senate. President Roosevelt signed the Lend-Lease Act into law on the 11th of March, 1941, and began implementing it immediately. Specifically, it allowed the president to, quote, sell, transfer title to, exchange, lease, lend, or otherwise dispose of to any such government whose defense the president deems vital to the defense of the United States, any defense article. Though initially aimed at helping Great Britain, it would be extended to the Republic of China in April of 1941 and to the Soviet Union in October of 1941. So we begin with Lend-Lease Aid to Britain. Throughout the course of World War II, the USA provided Britain and its worldwide empire some $31.4 billion in military aid via Lend-Lease. Once Lend-Lease was passed, President Roosevelt would sign off on $1 billion in such aid to Britain in October of 1941. Previously, in 1940, the U.S.-U.K. Destroyers for Bases Agreement had allowed the U.S. to transfer 50 destroyers to the British and Canadian navies in exchange for basing rights in the West Indies. The purpose of this was obvious, to help fortify American coastal defenses. The U.S. was also given rights to establish bases in Bermuda and Newfoundland without cost. In 1942, the United States and Britain signed the Anglo-American Mutual Aid Agreement providing each other with aid and services without charging commercial payments. War material given by America was to be used until returned or destroyed. Materials returned after the termination date were sold to Britain at a discounted rate of $1.75 billion. Reverse lend lease on the part of Britain provided the U.S. with services and equipment for the duration of the war. Some $8 billion, or $124 billion in modern dollars, was provided to the United States by its allies. 90% of this aid came from the British Empire in the form of weaponry, ambulances, petroleum, and foodstuffs. Next, Lend-Lease Aid to the Soviet Union. President Roosevelt considered the aid to the Soviet Union a necessity, as, should that country fall, a primary front in Europe would be ended, and the Allies would find victory to be much more elusive. As a result, substantial aid from the United States went to the Soviet Union via the Lend-Lease Program. Some 17,500,000 tons of food and material totaling $11.3 billion would go to Russia from October 1, 1941 through and including May 31, 1945. These included but were not limited to some 400,000 jeeps and trucks, 12,000 armored vehicles of which 7,000 were tanks, uh, more specifically, 1,386 were M3 Lee tanks and 4,100 and two M4 Sherman tanks were sent. Additionally, they received 11,400 aircraft, of which 4,719 were Bell P-39 Air Cobras, as well as 1.75 million tons of food, primarily salt, grain, and other foodstuffs. The United States supplied the Soviet Union with lend -lease materials through three main routes, the Arctic Route, the Persian Route, and the Pacific Route. More explanation is as follows. The Arctic route was done via Arctic convoys and was the shortest and most direct route to the USSR. It sailed across the Atlantic, past Iceland and Britain, as well as German-held Norway. As a result, the Norway factor made it the most dangerous path for transport. A total of 3.9 million tons sailed along this route, with 7% being lost and 93% arriving safely in the Soviet Union. 23% of all Lend-Lease supplies would reach the USSR through this route. Next, with the Persian route, which sailed through the South Atlantic and around the Cape of Good Hope in Southern Africa and up the Indian Ocean and through Iran, this route was the longest path of transport, yet ironically the safest. Along the Persian route, some 4,160,000 tons of goods were transported to the Soviet Union, some 27% of the total. 
Lastly, the Pacific route involved crossing the Pacific Ocean into Soviet Pacific ports. The route was adversely affected by the onset of war between the U.S. and Japan, and after December 1941, only, Sovi only Soviet ships could be used. Only non-military goods could be transported along this path. In spite of the ships coming from America, Japan never tried to disrupt shipping along this route. That is because Japan did not want war with the Soviet Union. That said, some 8,244,000 tons of goods went along this route, 50% of lend aid to the Soviet Union. For a more detailed breakdown of the supplies which went to the USSR via lend between October 1941 and May 1945, they received 427,284 trucks, 13,303 combat vehicles, 2,328 ordnance service vehicles, 35,170 motorcycles, 2,670,371 tons of petroleum products, 4,478,116 tons of foodstuffs, uh, primarily meat, sugar, flour, salt, grain, etc. 1,911 steam locomotives, 9,920 flat cars, 66 diesel locomotives, 1,000 dump cars, 120 tank cars, 35 heavy machinery cars. The USA received some 2 million in reverse lend-lease from the Soviet Union. Much of this aid came in the form of servicing, landing, and refueling aircraft, industrial machinery, uh, as well as 300,000 tons of chrome ore, 32,000 tons of manganese ore, as well as plentiful supplies of gold, wood, and platinum. Even more so than Britain, American lend -lease aid to the Soviet Union was critical to their war effort and essentially kept them in the war as a whole. This was evidenced by the statements of several Soviet statesmen, including Joseph Stalin himself. Indeed, during the Tehran Conference of 1943, the Soviet premier stated that, quote, without American machines, the United Nations could never have won the war. Twenty years later, in 1963, Soviet Marshal Georgi Zhukov remarked, Today, some say the Allies didn't really help us. But listen, one cannot deny that the Americans shipped over to us material without which we could not have equipped our armies, held in reserve, or been able to continue the war. Nikita Khrushchev, who later served as premier of the USSR between 1953 and 64, is on the record for saying, I would like to express my candid opinion about Stalin's views on whether the Red Army and the Soviet Union could have coped with Nazi Germany and survived the war without aid from the United States and Britain. First, I would like to tell about some remarks Stalin made and repeated several times when we were discussing freely amongst ourselves. He stated bluntly that if the United States had not helped us, we would not have won the war. If we had had to fight Nazi Germany one-on-one, -on -one, we could not have stood up to Germany's pressure, and we would have lost the war. No one ever discussed this subject officially, and I don't think Stalin had left any written evidence of his opinion, but I will state here that several times in conversations with me, he noted that these were the actual circumstances. He never made a special point of holding a conversation on the subject, but when we were engaged in some kind of relaxed conversation, going over international questions of the past and present, and we were, when we would return to the subject of the path we had traveled during the war, that is what he said. When I listened to his remarks, I was fully in agreement with him, and today I am even more so. So with that, folks, we see that American lend lease aid was crucial to the Soviet Union's war effort, and without it, the USSR would not have survived World War II. So that takes us to British aid to the Soviet Union. The United States was not the only power to supply the Soviet Union with military assistance during World War II. As a result of the Anglo-Soviet Agreement signed on the 12th of July, 1941, the UK would begin supplying the Soviets with military equipment and other crucial supplies, all right, all of which were essential to their war effort. With this agreement, both countries pledged to come to the assistance of the other in their war against Germany and agreed to not make separate peace agreements. British shipments to Russia commenced in September of 1941 by convoy through the perilous Arctic Sea Route to the port of Murmansk. We just went over that, uh, if you recall, the dangerous Arctic Route. The first shipment contained 40 Hawkeye hurricane planes, some 550 mechanics and pilots of the 151st Wing Squadron 
uh, came along with this as well. By December of 1941, uh, at the same time the USA entered World War II, Lindley's tanks would constitute 30 to 40 percent of Russian tank strength outside of Moscow. Without that aid, who knows what the result may have been. Well, we know what the result would have been. A total of 4 million tons of food and war material would be sent by Britain to the USSR. This was some 308 million British pounds worth of munitions and some 120 million British pounds worth of food and raw materials. According to the 1942 Anglo-Soviet Military Supplies Agreement, all British military aid to the Soviet Union was sent free of charge. Ultimately, Britain delivered to the USSR uh, these numerical values with respect to men and equipment. Between June 1941 and May 1945, Britain delivered to the USSR some 3,000 plus hurricane aircraft, 4,000 plus other aircraft, 27 naval vessels, 5,218 tanks, including 1,380 Valentines from Canada, 5,000 plus anti-tank guns, 4,020 ambulances and trucks, 323 machinery trucks, which mobile vehicle workshops equipped with genera generators and all the wielding uh, and power tools uh, required to perform heavy servicing. 1,212 universal carriers and Lloyd carriers with another 1,348 from Canada, 1,721 motorcycles, uh, 1.15 uh, uh, billion uh, pounds worth of uh, aircraft engines, 1,474 radar sets, 4,338 radio sets, 600 naval radar uh, and sonar sets, hundreds of naval guns, and 15 million pairs of boots. Men on the ground. So that takes us to repayment of Lend-Lease. Accordingly, Congress terminated all remaining Lend-Lease to the UK on September the 2nd, 1945. Britain, in wishing to retain a decent amount of this equipment after the war, was sold much of this at 10% of its value. Under the terms of the Anglo-American Loan of 1946, the Brits were given a loan value of $1.75 billion for Lend-Lease portions of post-war loans. Starting in 1951, Britain was to pay this in 50 annual payments at 2% interest with five years of deferred payments. The final payment of 83 million was made on December 29, 2006, 61 years after World War II had ended. To the Soviet Union, the USA never truthfully expected to be repaid at all by the USSR. At the war's end, the USA asked the Soviets for 1.3 billion to clear in repayment, but was only offered 170 million. This dispute remained ongoing for years until 1972 when it was resolved somewhat when the USSR offered $722 million, which represented 25% of the initial indemnity with inflation. In 1990, the Soviets and Americans agreed that the USSR would pay $670 million by the year 2030. And with the collapse of the USSR in 1991, all debts remaining were reassigned to Russia. They, in turn, would satisfy all remaining debts in full to the United States in August of 2006. Uh, just a few months before the UK. In conclusion, the Lend-Lease program was vital to sustaining both the economies and war efforts of many nations during World War II, most significantly the UK and the Soviet Union. From 1941 to 45, millions of tons of war material, food and other supplies were transported from American shores to our allies virtually ensuring an allied victory in the most destructive war in modern history. Though many historians through time, most especially Russian, have attempted to downplay the significant role that Lindley's played in keeping their nations afloat, um, facts all right, and evidence and verbal testimony from the Soviet statesmen have decisively proven otherwise. Okay? Indeed, without this aid, the Soviet Union would not have been able to survive World War II. Russia simply did not have the capacity or capability to compete with German uh, manpower and industrial strength. Okay? Even though Britain could arguably make such claims, being that its island status may well have saved it from a German invasion, no British historians on the record or statesmen have ever made such claims that their nation could have sustained the war without the vital American assistance provided by the Lend-Lease Program. All right? Monuments to the program exist in Fairbanks, Alaska, as well as Magadan in Russia. So I thank you so much for listening to History Bite 351 on the Lend-Lease uh, Act of 1941. If you have any questions or controversies, you can leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them.
If you like this video, please drop me a like. That would be greatly appreciated. I hope you learned a thing or two from this. Uh, and, you know, even if you might have already known much of this information, hopefully I had added something to it that maybe you didn't know. But in any case, I thank you so much for listening. And I leave you with these timeless words that continue to guide me day to day. Believe in yourself. Dream, try, and do good. Take care, everybody. Again, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you at the next video. Peace.